Hey everybody, welcome to another episode on the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI and I got three great stories that just came out this week that I will tie together at the end, but they're spot on the human impact of AI. So number one, Time had their annual event where they handed out their awards to people for making an impact this year and Two of the people they talked to, one was Elon Musk. There was an interview with him where they asked him about OpenAI, and he was very clear in his opinion about OpenAI and what was going on there. But that's not the video I wanted to talk about. The one I wanted to talk about is an interview with Sam Altman, the reborn CEO of OpenAI. So this interview was very, very interesting but maybe not for the reason you're thinking I'm going to say. The very first question they asked him was, what happened? Why did you get fired at OpenAI? Well, it was very interesting because Sam gave four or five short responses to that question. None of them answered the question. I'll tell you what I think in a minute. But he was sort of talking around what the real answer is. And he said, Things like, well, you know, OpenAI is moving very, very quickly in its development of AI, and not everyone's comfortable with that. And he mentioned AGI, and he gave some other vague answers. The interview then went on to other questions. Almost every single question the guy asked him from that point after that first question, Sam Altman specifically mentioned AGI. So my viewers know that two days after Sam got fired, I did a video with a hypothesis saying there's two possibilities of why he got fired. I said, assuming that there was something he should have told the board and didn't tell the board, which was what the board said was the reason they fired him. I said, one is that they invented AGI and they didn't tell the board that they were working on that specifically as opposed to generally, right? ChatGPT is an evolutionary step to an AGI and GPT-4 is a further step and GPT-5, already ready, just not released, will be yet another step toward it. But this is different. So you take two things. One is he did not clearly answer the question about why he got fired. He sort of talked around it, mentioning AGI. Then every other question he, he mentions AGI. I'm going with my first theory, and I think I was right, that OpenAI has invented an AGI, and this is not a full-blown AGI. What is a full-blown AGI? A full-blown AGI is a, a replication, in a way, of the human brain. In other words, it's very flexible, and it can be applied to any situation and any problem and work towards an answer. But this is a partial AGI, I think, is what they've completed, which means that it can, unlike AI up to chat GPT, which was always for a very single specific application, right? Reading x-rays, reading MRIs, searching for new drugs, folding proteins, checking product coming off a manufacturing line for quality. All of these are very specific single use things. A partial AGI can do many, many different things, but not everything. I think that's where they are now. And the fact that Sam Altman referenced AGI in virtually every other question he answered, plus he talked around AGI in his sort of non-answer to the question of why did you get fired, I think nails it. And, and here's one more thing for you. You guys remember that about a year ago now, maybe a year ago in November, right around the time ChatGPT came out, there was a Google employee who went public online saying Google had created an AGI and he had been working on it and Google promptly fired him. The fact that that popped back into my mind at the moment that I realized, based on this interview, what had happened at OpenAI is not a coincidence. Why? Because there's only two companies in the entire world where an AGI could come out of right now, OpenAI and DeepMind. OpenAI partners with Microsoft, Massive Corporation, Unlimited Resources, and 
DeepMind, part of Google, massive corporation, unlimited resources. I'm going to make a comment here. There is ample support on the internet for the comment I'm about to make, so I'm not going to support this statement, but I know it to be true. Both big corporations and the government have hidden things from the public when they have thought that they are not ready to hear them. This is a perfect example of it. If you were to broadly come out and just say, okay, yes, we've created an AI, AGI, if you did that right now, there'd be hysteria. Hysteria. So that's what this whole thing has been about. These are not equivalent yet to a human brain, but they are a very long step on the way to creating that. And then the final comment is, you guys remember what someone that I told you said at AGI was, of course you understand that once the first real AGI is created, it can create the next version of itself itself that will be superhuman intelligence. It's here, it's here people. And I just wanna make sure that you're ready to accept that because this is a huge psychological and emotional adjustment for the world population. And I believe this has happened, and I urge you to brace yourself mentally for hearing this officially very soon, that an AGI exists. Prepare yourself. So that was the first piece of news that dropped this week that was huge. The second piece of news was a new video from Amazon about a new robot in their warehouse. This robot is different than every previous robot put into their warehouse. How is it different? It's a humanoid robot that can do every task in that warehouse that a human can do already. So this is an autonomous robot, autonomous, and it can do every task that a human can do. So they had this video. It was not, the video was not by Amazon. It was on future of everything segment done by NBC News. And they're talking to the guy who's either the warehouse manager, or he's a senior person from Amazon. And they said to him, are you gonna replace all the people in these warehouses with this robot now that you have it? There's 300,000 people working in your warehouses. And the guy said, he literally said this, he was very transparent. He said, let me put it to you this way. This robot can do any task that any of our current employees can do in the warehouse. It doesn't need vacation. It doesn't get sick. It can work multiple shifts and it doesn't need benefits. It doesn't need health care and stuff like that. And the person from NBC News then goes, yeah, but this robot cost $250,000 to which the guy said, yeah, but the payback period on that with this robot is less than two years. That from an investment perspective is a winner. If you're an investor, and you invest in a physical asset like a robot and you can make your money back and then make pure profit in less than two years, you'll do that investment all day, every day. So what does that mean? That means if you work in an Amazon warehouse, like I've been telling warehouse people for a while now, get another job, find another thing to do, that requires the human touch, take training, get training, do whatever you have to do, but you're gonna want to start getting yourself out of a warehouse job now. Why? Because that robot may cost 250,000 today, but I told you my story about my prior company where I tried to introduce a ro industrial robot into the company and the price dropped from 150,000 one year to 75,000 by the next year. That exactly will happen with this humanoid robot. Maybe not quite as fast. Maybe it'll go from 250 to 200 and then 200 to 150 and then 150 to 100,000 as production of these things scales up, but it's gonna happen. There's zero doubt about that. And the cheaper these things get, the faster they're gonna roll out everywhere. And keep in mind, Amazon is a massive, massive corporation with a billions of dollars, sorry, hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue. 250,000 is nothing to Amazon. It's a rounding error, as they say in 
accounting. It's like a penny to you and me. Get yourself another job, train, get yourself trained, find something different to do. Start looking right now. I would start looking tomorrow. That was the second video, and I'm gonna tie this all together at the end. Third video, equally as eye-opening. This video was from the Wall Street Journal, and it's titled, How Micro Factories Could Revolutionize Car Manufacturing. And it's about a almost fully automated car assembly plant, small scale, in Singapore, done by Hyundai. And they show the robots building the whole car. They said this factory is way more automated than the Tesla factory. There's, there's only a handful of people working in this whole factory building cars, a handful. And they did it in Singapore because Singapore is a small country with a small market, right? So they, they can shake down the whole technology there, make cars and sell them these EVs that will obviously be autonomous in the future and get everything working properly there. And then they said they're going to expand this to their mainline manufacturing plants. So there's a big picture emerging here. Let's tie these three things together and put a nice bow on it, as they say. One, partial AGI is here. Maybe full AGI, I'm not convinced on that, but some kind of AGI exists right now today. Two, Full automation of warehouses is now here. All it takes is the time it takes to buy and build enough of these robots and roll them out. Full warehouse automation is here as I've been predicting. Three, a fully self-contained, fully autonomous car factory is on the immediate horizon. Over enough time, they figure out how to get rid of the few people they have working in this car plant right now. Big picture, what does that mean? AI smarter than humans. Humans being replaced by robotics and automation. The exact reason I started the AI Guide, to prepare you for this. I've been talking about this for just short of four years now, before anyone on the internet almost was talking about AI. Get yourself ready. Find a job focusing on the human touch. There's plenty of those available. There are many professions that will only be partially disrupted. I will give you a great example. Being a lawyer. Well, you already don't need a lawyer to write a contract write acquisition documents, write merger documents, write a will, anything to do with what the vast majority of attorneys did before documents is on a very short leash now. What will remain is litigation, work in courts, and the client interface part of it. That part will remain for a long time, but all of the stuff that's research, documents, all that stuff fully automated soon. That means a much smaller legal profession than today, much smaller. Being a doctor will work the same way. I've told you, if you are blue collar, plumber, electrician, that'll take a very long time. Anything hands-on or direct human contact, massage therapist, nursing, I don't wanna make a list here. So there, there's plenty of options out there to change to a job to protect yourself. Do it now. So thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please support us on Patreon so that I can keep going to AI conferences to keep you on the cutting edge of AI. Thanks so much. See you next time. Take care. Bye.